Hi, I'm Professor David Farina. In today's lecture, we're going to be discussing the Jovian planets, Jovian interiors. Let's get started. So as we talk about the Jovian interiors, once again, we're going to be using Jupiter as our analog to discuss this because Jupiter is the biggest and probably the most complicated of our Jovian worlds. Now, keep in mind that Jupiter's interior is not directly accessible. We have no way of producing a probe that could penetrate through uh, the, its layers in any way. Um, so what we are looking at here is strictly based on uh, evidence that has um, other means by which we can calculate the density of the planet by uh, looking at its gravity, by looking at the way it interacts with other planetary bodies, with the way it interacts with its moon, um, and also its surface features and surface activity lend, its, uh, lend us ability to look at it in a different way and determine what's going on inside. So based on our observations, um, here's what we think is going on inside. First, um, the first 100 kilometers or so um, are going to be at a temperature of about 300 Kelvin. Um, keep in mind that that's right above the temperature of, um, you know, the melting of water ice. So like right around room temperature or so. Its pressure is about 10 atmospheres of Earth pressure. Uh, as we go down deeper, we go down to a depth of about 20,000 or so kilometers depth. Notice the dramatic temperature rise here. Uh, 11,000 Kelvin now, we're significantly higher than the surface temperature of the sun. Now that surface temperature of the sun, keep in mind the sun's core is where nuclear fusion occurs. As we go even further down to a depth of 60,000 kilometers, its temperature reaches 18,000 Kelvin, and its pressure now uh, is 4 times 10 to the 7th, or four, uh, 40 million atmospheres of pressure on Earth. So pretty uh, high pressures here. And as we get to the very center, we've got an icy or rocky core with a depth of about 70,000 kilometers and a temperature of 25,000 Kelvin. And this is the surface temperature of some of the brightest stars. Um, so once again, keep in mind that surface temperature inside of stars where fusion is occurring is millions and millions of Kelvin. So this is nowhere near as hot as a star is, but I do want to point out it's as hot as the surface temperature of a star uh, in Jupiter's inner layers. Now you'll notice that the metallic hydrogen layer represents a huge portion of Jupiter's interior. Now this metallic hydrogen is kind of an interesting concept. So we think of, of hydrogen as a gas, but if you look at the periodic table, it's actually in that first column, the alkali metals. And that is because under certain conditions, which do exist inside of Jupiter, Hydrogen actually acts like a metal, and this is important because with that hydrogen, metallic hydrogen outer layer, and this icy, rocky inner core, Jupiter has the ability to produce a very strong magnetic field. So this is a very important observation, and one of the indications of what's going on inside of Jupiter is the magnetic field. On the outer layers, we now have molecular hydrogen, Temperatures are low enough where that's possible. So no, once again, no direct information is available for interior of Jupiter, uh, but its main components we do know are mostly hydrogen and helium, very similar to that of a star, very similar to the composition of the universe as a whole, and uh, is a very good indicator as to the composition of our solar nebula, the thing that formed the planets and the sun uh, in the early solar system. As we compare Jupiter to the other inner, uh, the other inner parts of the Jovian interiors, we'll find that 
Jupiter and Saturn have a very similar structure. Jupiter just simply has a much thicker metallic hydrogen outer core. Uh, an interesting thing, though, is that the rocky core of Saturn does appear to be larger. Kind of an interesting thing to look at there. And then Uranus and Neptune. We've got Uranus on this side, Neptune on the other. Kind of an interesting diagram here. Um, we find that they are significantly smaller, of course. Uh, it's got this weird slush layer, which is kind of cool to think about. Kind of like slush and snow. Uh, we've got a rocky core and a molecular hydrogen outer layer like the rest of these. Now, uh, if we're comparing them all four together, this is kind of a neat little way to look at things. Notice these are not to scale anymore in terms of their size. So it's just a way to compare them all four next to each other. Now, Jupiter's magnetosphere, once again, is caused by that internal uh, activity. So we've got that uh, rocky solid core and we've got that liquid metallic hydrogen outer layer and when we have the energy of um, these now magnetic substances going around one another we can produce a magnetic field and jupiter has a very strong magnetic field as you can see here its magnetic field is so big that it extends past the orbit of saturn Now, as a result of this very strong magnetic field, Jupiter has spectacular aurora. Now, remember, aurora are the interaction of the magnetosphere of a planet with the sun's solar winds. So as the sun's solar winds, which are charged particles, interact with the magnetosphere, they're concentrated at the poles uh, where they can uh, cause elements within the atmosphere of this planet to kind of jump to higher orbitals. And when they jump back down to these lower ground states, the atoms emit a photon of light. If you don't understand the concepts behind Aurora, please look to previous videos uh, with Earth's atmosphere and our auroras, and you'll learn quite a bit more. Now, in terms of these magnetic fields, you'll notice that we've got a diagram here where we've got uh, basically what's a bar magnet represented um, with this rectangle in each of these worlds. You'll notice the magnetic axis of Jupiter is about 10 degrees offset from its rotational axis. So if this planet is spinning, that's the rotational axis. And then the magnetic axis is how it would appear to something like a compass. You'll notice Saturn's magnetic and its rotational axis are almost identical. Earth's magnetic axis is off by about 11 degrees. Now, Uranus and Neptune are dramatically different, with Uranus being 60 degrees of angle between the rotational axis and the magnetic axis, and Neptune being 46 degrees offset from the rotational axis and its magnetic axis. So this is an important observation that magnetic axes and their rotational axes of these worlds are not necessarily the same. Thanks for watching the Jovian planets, Jovian interiors. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to learn more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to get a notification each time I make a video, please click the bell at the bottom. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.